In this video, I'm going over cost to build a pickleball court. Also, um, some things to do before you go out and get bids on it. Um, I'll start with the size. So, you know, you're going to need to choose what size that you want the court to be. Um, pickleball court is 20 feet by 44 feet. So the size I chose, which I believe, I think should be like the minimum that you do, is 24 feet by 48 feet. That's going to give you a two foot perimeter around the outside. I feel like that's the smallest you would want, you know, for serving. Also for, you know, not like breaking your ankle off the edge. So preferably it would be even larger than that, but that's what I chose for my pricing. Um, so what you need to do is... Before you choose your size, you know, think it through. And the next slide will kind of maybe determine um, how big that you make it. But, you know, you're going to want it to be wider so you can put a bench down. Um, do you think that two feet is not enough room to stand in the back and serve? Um, just thoughts like that to think through. Um, obviously, a cord is not good, you know, if you're getting hurt. So even if you do, do a smaller cord, you know, you're going to want to spend extra time to really build up the black dirt and grass seed or put some decorative rock or something like to the same height as the final asphalt to prevent that from happening. So, before you go get bids, I recommend that you get locates. Locates are normally done by the company installing the project. You know, it's not completely important to do this but I think it's nice because especially if you have a bigger backyard maybe it'll change where you put it because it's always easier to put the you know court somewhere where there are no locates that's for a few things um, with removal of the grass and when you're doing the basing process it's nice to not have to worry about you know things being underneath it also if you have issues with somehow with like your gas line or electrical or anything it's just nice that it's not under your asphalt so when they go and have to maybe repair it um, that's obviously rare so that shouldn't be too big of a worry but it's just something to think about um, if you are going to put the court where there are locates you know when you're getting the locates go out there when the you know when the person's there marking out you know they're gonna be marking out your cable gas electric water and don't bug them you know, so they're there longer than they have to be, but um, with my experience, I've always been able to ask them how far down, you know, how far is the cable down? Cable is the number one thing that you're going to have to worry about normally, because gas lines and <clears throat> electrical water, that's all normally deep enough to where you shouldn't have to worry about it with something, a build like this. Now, it is possible that an older house or someone was lazy and didn't do it properly so it's just good to ask them how deep everything is now if you have a tree in the way get it removed um, before you don't have to but it's just easier obviously if you're doing like just getting budget numbers and the tree's not scheduled to get removed for a couple months and you want to get budget numbers I get it but it is easier for an estimator if the tree's gone you know the stump's gone roots are gone you're gonna get a better price. They know they're gonna have to deal with, with anything in the way like that because it is annoying. Um, homeowners will say, you know, we're gonna grind the stump, and then they don't, and then now we're trying to rip it out with the bobcat. Um, but so it's just nice to have everything gone. Um, one of the biggest factors in pricing is the access. You know, the main things are fences. So if you have a fence with just a small gate, you're gonna to wanna to have that fence removed in that area so that it's wide enough for them to get you know about 10 feet should be plenty wide you know, for a bobcat and a paving machine uh, depends on what kind of paver they have but just ask them how wide if you have to most of the time it's cheaper for you to you know remove the fence buy a new fence and install it than it is to pay pay them to have to go and hand dig with a shovel wheelbarrow and do all that um, also, if your dirt and grass can be left on site, it's going to help with the pricing as well. And also, it's not just the dump charges and hauling it away. It also has to do with 
the project can move faster. Do you have one person there uh, with the bobcat removing, doing all the prep work, and you'll have uh, the other person able just to be able to go drive and get base and not have to be waiting for the dump truck to be filled up and dump it and then fill up with base. So it's just a, a little bit faster of a process. Here's the pricing I came up with. You know, every area I'm sure is completely different. You're gonna be able to find companies that are cheaper, more expensive. This is kind of middle of the road pricing, average pricing for the Minneapolis, St. Paul area. Uh, basing labor, 25 hours. We charge 150 an hour, so that's 25 times 150, it's about $3,700 loads out so that's the grass the rocks the the dirt that needs to get removed four loads out at $150 at $600 loads or tons in that's 40 tons which would be about four loads in it is about $12 a ton for just recycled class 5 that's $480 asphalt tons in 22 tons um, I bid this at three inches there's a lot of people out there, I'm sure, that think three inches is overkill. You only need two inches. And, <clears throat> you know, that's probably true, but I just bid at three because, in my opinion, the labor isn't that much different. Material is a little more, but you want it to last, so just do three inches. Three inches, by the way, is the most, at least with the mix designs we have here in Minnesota, the most that you can do with one layer of asphalt and still get proper compaction of it. So that's 22 tons at $70 a ton, $1,540. Asphalt labor, 22 hours, that's 22 times 150, $3,300. Um, total price, $9,620. Divide by 0 0.9, that's going to be some profit margin, $10,700. Now, these, you know, these hours are the main um, factors here. So the hours are based off me you know like an average backyard with pretty good access a little bit of stretch where you have to drive the bobcat to get back there get a bucket full drive back to the street you know if you're gonna do it in your front yard or let's say it's closer to a road that they can use sometimes like a side road you can get to the backyard easier you know that price can get down I, I ran some numbers for let's just say perfect scenario in the front yard everything's great you know you can get probably down to around seven thousand dollars so but if you have really bad access i could see it being as high as like twenty thousand and then some other costs you know painting um about five hundred to four thousand that depends on if you want to do just some white paint for the lines keep the black um, asphalt or if you want to go over to the top with, you know, the, forgot the name, the fancier paint, you know, like the green or red paint that you see at like a park for a tennis court. <clears throat> um, I've seen that, you know, for something like this as high as 4,000. Once again, those can vary tremendously. Personally, I would just, what I would do is I would keep the black asphalt and I would call a striping company. So that's a company that's going to do like striping for parking lots. So they're going to have... You know good equipment um, a lot of times you know it's all GPS or lasered so they can just paint out the lines perfectly obviously you can do it yourself um, I've actually did one myself at the cabin you know we just ran string lines and grabbed some spray paint spray painted over and then my mom actually put a concrete sealer over the top and we got about a year and a half two years out of it now it didn't look great so now as professionals getting it done, but we were just like, it's at the cabin. We don't really care. I'm just in the driveway. But, you know, if you're going to spend all this money, like in my backyard, if I had it, I would definitely get it professionally done. And the nets, you know, they can range between 200 and 2,500. Once again, on our cabin, we have one that ranges about the $200 range, and it's fine for us. Um... But then again, if I was doing this in my backyard, I might want to get myself a you know a little fancier, more professional net. Um, but you know that's that's all something that you can upgrade down the line too. 
So hope this video helped give you an idea of what it would cost. Um, a lot of times you can do prep work yourself, especially if you're, you know, handy like that, or you have friends or family that can help you. Some of the prep work is, um, you saw those labor hours. You could have someone, you know, help you dig it out, haul it away, just throw in some base and compact it. You know, you don't need to get it exact because the, normally the company that's going to install the asphalt is going to want to get in there, set grades, and get a perfect grade and compaction of it anyway. So just get it close for them. You can probably save a lot of money as well. Thank you so much for watching. And I will be posting more videos similar to this, you know, on a basketball court pricing. And um, I think I'm going to do some driveway and some patio pricing videos as well. Um, so definitely like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Thank you.